On today's video, we're diving in talking about beginner mistakes that a lot of people make when they first get into riding motorcycles. And we're gonna talk about some ways to prevent these from happening. This isn't gonna be an all-inclusive list because there's a million different things out there that people do when they're first learning how to ride and when they're veterans too that maybe they've developed from bad habits. But we're gonna talk today about a laundry list of different things that I see out there all the time when I'm out riding. Like and subscribe and let's get into this right now. So the very first thing that I see, and I see this a lot when I go out to dealerships and things like that, I'm just looking at bikes, is people getting on bikes that are way too big for them. And I know you really wanna get out there, you wanna try some bikes out, but if it's your very first bike and you are you just got your license, you're going out to the dealership looking at a bike, or maybe you're trying to hop on your buddy's bike and it's just way too big for you, guys, hesitate from doing that because you're gonna end up wrecking that bike and maybe you just picked up a $40,000 bagger and you're just way too small for that bike or you don't have the experience to get out and ride that bike, guys, you're gonna have a $40,000 pile of scrap metal laying there after you end up wrecking that thing. So don't do that. Start out on something a little bit smaller. Start out on something that is manageable towards your size and your skills. Don't just go out there and get a bagger for your very first bike because you might regret doing that. But if you have a history of riding bikes and things like that, then guys, you might be at that skill level where you can ride a bagger. Baggers are a lot heavier than a motorcycle like that's behind me. They handle a lot different and your skill level needs to be a lot better to handle those motorcycles. It's just a fact. So that's the very first one, getting a bike that's way too big for you. Next one is after you pass the BRC course, the basic rider course, or a similar course like that, and after that, thinking you're invincible to the world, thinking that you just know everything that there is to know about motorcycles and safety behind motorcycles, guys, that's not the case. Everybody is still learning. Everybody, veterans, intermediate, whatever, they're still learning every single time they get out there on the bike, learning different scenarios, how to mitigate risks in those different scenarios. So you really need to manage your, your confidence levels and also your overconfidence because being overconfident on a bike can really lead to some uh, scenarios you don't wanna be in. So think about those things when you're out there. Don't be overconfident as soon as you pass that BRC course. All right, the next one is gonna be not practicing low speed maneuvers. Everybody thinks they can just get on a bike and go out there and it's just straight lines all the time. Guys, that's not the case. A lot of people, when they wreck their bike or they lay the bike over, or it falls over, it's in parking lots or just simply trying to make a, a small turn or something like that. You really need to practice some of these things because those are the situations that are getting people in trouble. It's not intersections all the time. It's not other cars. It's making those small turns in parking lots that are damaging these $40,000 baggers because people just don't know how to handle their bikes in these low speed maneuvers. So some of the things that people don't practice enough is working that friction zone. They think after passing a course and getting their license that you know, riding that friction zone and learning how to manipulate the clutch is just gone. They think that it's just out there, straight lines, and they're going down the highway having a good time, right? I wish that was the case, but from time to time, you have to make these small, enclosed turns in parking lots, or maybe it's getting into your garage or something like that, and that's where people have upsets. Or maybe it's in a gravel parking lot at your local club, because a lot of clubs have gravel parking lots, and a foot slips or something like that, and there goes your bike down on the ground. Don't let that happen to you. You can mitigate some of these by just practicing some simple low speed maneuvers and just making sure you have a good footing when you come to a stop instead of sliding on some of that gravel. And these are some really easy things that you can get out there, practice in a parking lot, grab a couple cones. You can get on Amazon. They got the little, uh, like the BRC course style, little bitty cones. Grab a couple of those, go out to your local parking lot wherever that is, a school, a church, whatever, there's parking lots all over the place, and practice some of those low speed maneuvers. And you don't have to get too crazy with it. I know there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube, and they got this 900 pound bagger, and they're just you know, going crazy with it, guys. And then they lay it down. They have students that lay it down. You know, I don't suggest going out there and going crazy like that, but just work into it, ease into some of these maneuvers 
That way you build some confidence and you're not gonna go out there and wreck your brand new investment just because of a simple mistake. Another one is putting your foot down when you're making some of these low speed maneuvers. That right there, we're gonna talk about in the future, some beginner mistakes that make you look like a freaking idiot. And that is putting your foot down when you're trying, look like you're on a motocross track, just trying to go into a parking spot. That right there makes you look like an idiot. But a lot of people do it, and that's just a mistake right there that's gonna lead to some bad habits in the future, and it makes you look like an idiot. Don't be putting your foot down trying to make a little turn in a parking lot, unless you just have to catch yourself, and that's like your last ditch option but that shouldn't be your first go-to to put your foot down like that. That just, it's not a good look. Another one is taking off from a turn. So they practice this in a BRC course, but let's face it, a lot of those are smaller bikes and you don't have to use friction, if, and you don't have to use the friction zone as much, but a lot of people I see, they, they take off, they let the clutch ride out, and they can't make the turn to the right and like a, right from a stop to a right turn. They just can't make it because they haven't practiced those low speed maneuvers and that clutch control. You should be in that friction zone, making that right hand turn. That way you can really feather that gas. It's got the gyroscopic effect of the motorcycle and the leaning is gonna be able to make that motorcycle turn into that right lane without you having to cross over into the other lane or the intersection, God forbid, so that right there could lead to a lot of issues. So please focus on these low speed maneuvers. They're gonna save you a lot of time and money out there without crashing your motorcycle. Hopefully you're not crashing your motorcycle, but this, these tips right here are gonna help you mitigate those issues in the future. All right, another one that is related to riding out on the roads is not looking where you wanna go. See a lot of people, like for instance, the last scenario we talked about, making that right turn. They're focused on that intersection because maybe they've made some bad turns in the past. And so they're looking at that obstacle that they don't want to go at. So they are looking at it and then they overshoot that turn, whereas they should be looking where they want to go. That way they can let the bike do what it needs to do. So I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive to think, look where you want to go because you're trying to avoid some of these obstacles. But if you just get into that mindset and you really focus on where you want to go, it is gonna make you turn a lot sharper. Even out riding on the open roads, let's say you're going through some of the twisties, a lot of people tend to look kinda of in the crest of the curve instead of trying to look through the curve. So what they end up doing is either going towards the outside of the lane or they overshoot it so they're constantly having to correct versus them seeing the turn and looking through and just able to keep the same line all the way through the curve so you really need to focus on looking through that turn. That is a huge beginner mistake that I see a lot of people make is they'll get out there, they're riding with a bunch of buddies, maybe they're going way too fast and definitely they need to be looking at that turn or looking through the turn. Also, that's a big safety thing. If you're looking through that turn, you're gonna be able to see any obstacles, any oncoming traffic that may be over your line that way you can avoid that. So you really need to be looking where you want to be going, not what you're trying to avoid, such as, you know, some patches of gravel or something like that, because you could probably spot that if you're looking out far enough ahead anyway to kind of see those obstacles in advance. So don't get caught up at looking right down in front of you or off to the side, look way in advance, and that's going to help you out big time. That's probably one of the biggest uh, tips that I could pass on in this video is just making sure you're looking into that turn, looking ahead. All right, another one I see a lot of people do and I don't get it. I don't know, I think bad drivers in cars, it translates to bad riders on motorcycles and that is not looking before changing lanes. I mean, God forbid on a motorcycle, hopefully you're not out there texting and being that distracted that you can't just simply look over your shoulder to make a lane change or look to the left to make that lane change. This is easy stuff, guys, that get a lot of people hurt. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been cruising in a lane and not even realize there's a car in my blind spot over here. And if you have a full face helmet on or regardless of the helmet, it makes it even that more of a blind spot. You're not able to see out to the side of you. And if you have a really loud motorcycle, maybe you can't hear that vehicle coming up beside you. 
So therefore you need to make sure you're looking before you change lanes. It could be a bad ending right there if somebody were to be there and you're trying to make a lane change and they just end up clipping your rear end, that's not gonna be good for you. So please look before you make your lane changes. Don't just assume that you flew by a bunch of cars and they're still back there. They might have sped up. Maybe you pissed them off or something. I mean, we're always pissing cars off for some reason. I don't get it. Maybe it's the loud exhaust or whatever it may be, but people get pissed off at bikes for some damn reason. I don't get it. Just make sure you're looking over your shoulder before you make that lane change. All right, another huge tip right here is not assessing the intersection before you go through it. A lot of people, they're just out the daily grind on a motorcycle, maybe it's a long ride, whatever, or they're just used to going through town, just willy nilly, not really looking for a lot of different things going on. But you should be very aware, you should have your head on a swivel, making sure you're able to see as much that's happening in that intersection as possible. So you really need, I suggest slowing down at least a little bit before you just dart out into that intersection, you should really be looking at everything that's going on, slowing down, making your looks. That way you could check for any kind of traffic that may be running those red lights. Let's face it. I mean, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico and running a red light is just like running a yellow light. People don't give a shit. They will just run right through that thing and not even care. So when you're on a motorcycle, you really don't want to get T-boned, or at least I'd hope you don't want to. So definitely make those looks, slow down, assess the intersection. I think it's like 60 or 70% of motorcycle accidents happen at an intersection. Don't quote me on those stats, but I know it is like way up there. Is a lot of accidents happen, and I think fatalities at that happen at intersections because a lot of dynamic things going on, very complex scenario when you're in an intersection. I mean, you got people, you know, yielding, making turns. You got a lot of different cross traffic. I mean, a lot of things are going on. You got people on the other side that don't even know what the hell a yield is, and they're just making turns. So you really have to watch out for all the distracted drivers out there too. So make sure you assess the intersection before just going through it all willy nilly. And I think you're gonna be a lot better off. Another one, when you're out there on the road, I know they piss us off. Vehicles do a lot of dumb shit out there, but tailgating them isn't gonna solve anything. Okay, if you wanna confront them when you get to the gas station or wherever they pull off, then that's, that's your business. But tailgating them could end up very bad. And I see a lot of beginners do this. I think they can just have the same following distance as they do in their own vehicle. It's not the case with a motorcycle. I mean, a motorcycle can stop pretty quick, but in reality, it can't stop that quick. If somebody were to brake check you or something like that, you're gonna slam right into them. It's not gonna be a good day for you. So don't tailgate vehicles, and you're gonna be a lot better out there if you're a beginner. Okay, another one is not what you would think, riding to be seen. When I say riding to be seen, I'm not saying wear all your reflective gear. I don't really give a shit about that. I mean, I don't ride at night. Hence, you know, I take off my reflectors. I want my bike to look cool, right? But I don't do a lot of night riding, so I'm not worried about all the high-vis reflective stuff. But what I'm talking about is your riding position. Let's say you come up to an intersection. Make sure you're not blocked by all these other vehicles. Make sure you're in a spot where you can be seen but also where you're not gonna get clipped by other vehicles. And the same goes for when you're riding down the road. Don't ride so close, tailgating vehicles once again, that if somebody were to try to pass or something like that, maybe it's a two lane road, give yourself enough space to where that vehicle can also see you. That way they're not gonna to try to do something dumb. Or And that's really important when it comes up to an intersection let's say you have somebody across the way that's trying to make that left turn yield and they they're not looking for a bike so don't be so close to that vehicle in front of you that they don't see you make yourself known make your presence known in that intersection so you don't get clipped and that is a huge mistake i see a lot of people make is just getting way too close to that lead vehicle and that other vehicle just can't see you so Go out there, make your presence known. I know loud exhaust are a big topic and I don't get it. You know, I got berated at my freaking BRC course a couple years ago. I said uh, something about getting some loud pipes or something and they're like, they're just like, that's not true. 
there's statistics and all kinds of stuff that, that back up that uh, loud exhausts do not save lives. And I'm like, all right, I, I get it. Not every situation, loud exhaust save lives. But, I mean, this is a rant for another day. But I think loud exhaust, to a lot of extent, if, let's say if somebody's trying to pass or whatever, they can hear you, you know, unless they have their, their speakers wide open. They can hear you if you have loud exhaust right beside you. And that may be the result of, and that could impact them not making a lane change into you if they can hear your motorcycle there. So I believe to some extent it can help prevent injuries out there on the road. So, you know, I just thought I'd share that right there. Last little plug because they gave me some shit at the BRC course saying that I didn't know what the hell I was talking about and science did, but I'm just taking some common sense into play here. I know when a motorcycle is coming up beside me and they have loud exhaust because I can freaking hear it. So not everybody's out there with their music blasting and with a cell phone up to their ear and things like that. Some people are out there still just normal driving. So loud exhaust, I think, in my opinion, can help save lives to some extent. All right, taking turns too fast this is the next one. Once again, you get your first bike, you're out there riding with your buddies. I get it, you wanna keep up, you wanna be cool, whatever. If your ability isn't there yet, you don't have that skill set yet, don't worry about it. Keep building on your abilities. Don't just try to keep up with your friend because you're gonna end up with your $40,000 motorcycle in an embankment somewhere or over the side of the bank and it's gonna be a big pile of garbage. So take it slow if you're not to that ability yet and then start building on it. And then start looking through those turns and you're gonna be okay. But if you're going way too fast for your abilities, maybe too much for your bike, then there's nothing that can help you. You just have to slow down. You know, a lot of people go out there and they're on cruisers and they're riding with a pack of sport bikes. Cruisers cannot keep up with sport bikes. It's just a fact. You know, I'm not gonna be able to lean this thing like I would be able to an R6. It's just not how this motorcycle is built. So you have to take those turns a lot slower. Don't be out there being the cool guy. I mean, a lot of people, they also make turns too sharp on a cruiser and they might scrape a floorboard and that floorboard digs in, they lose traction with a rear tire and there they go into that bank. Take it slow, know the capabilities of your bike. If you know your bike has a low lean angle, then you can't obviously take those turns as fast as on a bike that doesn't have floorboards that hang so low. So know your capabilities, know the capabilities of your bike, slow down in those turns and it's gonna help you out a lot more as a beginner. And then just grow into those abilities as you learn and progress. So the last one I'm gonna leave you with is kind of what that last one was with riding with friends. Don't go out there and think that you know it all just by riding with a pack of friends. And be selective with who you ride with. I see a lot of people go out there they ride with a bunch of friends that don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know how to ride together. They're right beside each other, trying to make big turns. They're not staggered out the way they should be. They're not giving themselves enough room. And especially a lot of these people don't have ability to be riding in that close proximity to one another. So they end up making some bad turns. One goes into the other and then they're both down. So be sure when you're riding with some friends that they know what they're doing, y'all kind of build that relationship together, learn how you fit into the pack and how they ride, maybe hang back a little bit, don't let them throw you right in the middle of the pack, kind of gauge how your friends ride before you just go full throttle and send it in some of these turns. So be very selective when riding with people, especially riding with brand new people that you've never rode with before, you know, be hesitant a little bit before you just full send it. And know their skill level, also manage your skill level, and then find where the happy medium is where you can mesh your skills into their skill level. And if they're making turns too fast, guys, just slow down. Don't risk it for the biscuit, and you're gonna be a lot better out there on the roadways. All right, guys, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully you like some of these beginner mistakes and some of the feedback on not making some of these mistakes in the future. And this is not an all-inclusive list. Once again, there's a million different things that you can do out there on the road as a beginner that is just gonna screw you up and make it real bad at the end of the day for you if you're out here crashing your motorcycle just because of some of these small mistakes. 
Guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, place some comments in that comment box below on some things that you guys see out there on the roadways and maybe some future video ideas that you'd like to see from the channel. We're really trying to amp up the motorcycle part of this channel because, hey, it's my new hobby right now. I've been getting back into motorcycles. I've been riding for years. I grew up on a Honda Shadow Spirit and, you know, I got rid of that bike a long time ago and like 10 years ago and I'm just now getting back into it. So a lot of these mistakes are things I've seen when I was growing up learning to ride with some of my friends and they had sport bikes. You know, I had the Honda Shadow Spirit didn't have a lot of power. So that's probably one reason I didn't get into some accidents because that thing was just so underpowered. But place your story in the comment box below, some things that helped you out, maybe some things uh, that you've seen when you were a beginner or maybe you did. So guys, I appreciate that feedback below and I'll see you in future videos. Thanks for watching.